Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Um, I'm honored to be here today. I am so excited for the pitches and to see the progress that these teams have made over the last six months. Um, such an exciting day. But first, I want to take a look at what they may experience after today's event. Um, discuss what does leading a startup actually look like? And so for that, I'm happy to welcome three leading CEOs of healthcare startups to talk about their experience growing a company from an idea um, to solve a great problem. Patty White, first of all, is a serial entrepreneur with 25 years of experience in medical technology and has launched over 30 successful products. Hemix Health has commercialized Gazelle, an affordable, portable, and easy to use diagnostic platform for sickle cell disease and malaria. <laughs> CJ Swamy, CEO of KiddoWare, has 18 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur, early stage investor, and consultant. KiddoWare is focused on connected care for pediatrics, He's utilizing remote patient monitoring and telehealth for health management. And Dom Raban, CEO of Exploro, has been a content and web developer for over 40 years and is chair of a digital innovation agency. Exploro is a digital therapeutics platform that uses augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and games to reduce anxiety for young patients going to the hospital. Really excited to get to know you all. Thank you for being here today um, and sharing with us. Um, all right, love that enthusiasm. Thanks all. Um, so take us back to the beginning. Where did this idea for your product and company come from? And, and then what did you do about it? Dom, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, so um, the idea came from personal experience, really. So um, back in 2011, my daughter, who was 13 at the time, uh, was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma. Um, she's fit and well now. She's eight years cancer free and doing great. But when she was ill, she was she was went through a you know a year of, of intense treatment, and during that year, she had no information about the people she'd meet, the environment she was going into, or the technologies and processes that would be used to treat her. And whenever there was any information, it was consultant to parent rather than consultant to to child. Uh, and so I got when she came out of treatment, I got really interested in the idea of information as a, a bona fide therapy. Uh, and did lots of research and discovered common sense, of course, but discovered that if you provide patients with information prior to an intervention, they experience reduced stress and reduced anxiety, and that can lead to better clinical outcomes. So I started to think about how, given my background in uh, emerging technologies, um, how I could put the skills of my agency to work to improve the experience for, for other children. So we came up with the idea of, of building a platform that uses games and augmented reality and artificial intelligence to deliver health information in a fun and playful way that leaves the child feeling empowered, engaged and informed. Yeah, that's really powerful, meaningful. And um, CJ, you have another product that focuses on helping children. So, Jessica, firstly, thank you so much for having us here. Uh, the genesis for Kiddo actually came through uh, my own personal experiences with my older son. So my older son, Ishan, was actually born with something called sensitive airways. So that means that he's easily allergic to kind of pollen, air pollution, catches viral infections pretty quickly as well. So we were kind of really struggling to manage his daily treatment protocols, manage his kind of activity on a daily kind of basis. So that set me kind of thinking about trying to see if we could kind of build a care coordination platform which would kind of plug the gap between parents like us uh, who, who would love to kind of get an additional support system, which is kind of coaching us, guiding us on what needs to be done with respect to our kids' kind of condition. And then also plug the gap with providers and care coordinators, especially who want to be able to kind of track patients like my son, uh, especially when they're kind of off clinic. And so that's where the idea kind of came from to kind of build this coordination platform continuous kind of clear platform between uh, patients and providers on the other end. And that's what we started building uh, with the kiddo. That's amazing. Obviously, highly usable, needed. Um, Patty, do you want to share about uh, Hemix Health? 
Sure. So ours is a little bit different. It actually started with the people. So uh, Peter Galen, who is my co-founder, and I, you know, we kind of got together in 2015 and we said, you know, we've, uh, in our past, we had done uh, products that where we had taken high technology products and made them lower cost and taken them out to um, the developing world. And we just, we kind of were both at a point in our lives where we said, maybe we should do another startup. And so we kind of started with the, we knew the need was out there, um, but we wanted to be able to fast track to a company. So we decided to start a process. Uh, we set up some criteria of what we were looking for. And then we went out and uh, talked with 20 different universities, looked at all their, you know, what they had in tech transfer. We had kind of a set of way to evaluate uh, what we were looking for. And out of that process, we kind of came up with a smaller number of technologies that we started doing doing some market research on and really narrowed it down to, to two of them. And then uh, we ended up licensing those two technologies uh, from Case Western Reserve University. And that's that really became the core of what was in Gazelle. I mean, we, we didn't know, we, we, we thought maybe only one of the technologies would make it as we as we went on, but it turned out we came up with a way to combine them and put them into the same platform. Wow, really interesting. Um, so how has your company evolved over time? You started out with this problem or with this connection and um, did it all just go smoothly according to plan? Um, or did you have to make some, some changes and modifications along the way? Patty, um, why don't you lead off? Sure. I mean, I, I guess in my experience, it, it seems like uh, companies never end up the, exactly the way that you think it's going to when you start out. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's actually one of the advantages of being in a startup is you can move quickly. You know, when you see an opportunity, you can mobilize people. And, you know, it's a great feeling. I spent many years working for big companies before I did my first startup. And, you know, in a big company, you know, you've got to go through the process. At a startup, you can decide tomorrow we're going to go over here and you can move. So uh, we were uh, one of the ones you know, we uh, change we made was just when it, it was the start of the pandemic. And, you know, we had really designed Gazelle uh, for a focus on low and medium resource countries. But, you know, it was really designed to be used a rapid diagnostic test that could be used remotely by a, maybe a less experienced user outside of a traditional lab, but really anywhere in the world. And, you know, with COVID, we really said, hey, here's an opportunity to incorporate this test because we, we saw that testing was changing. You know, we didn't all want to go to a big lab. Maybe we wanted to have a test, you know, at the university or at the, uh, at the airport, at the schools. And so, you know, we really reprioritized so that we could work on a, a, adding a COVID test to the platform. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing you can do. Of course, it's been a little harder than we thought it would be, like most things are, but, you know, we are actually getting very close to uh, being able to submit to regulatory. Wow. That is the fast pivot. Um, CJ, what about you and kiddo wear? Yeah, so I, I can certainly say that, you know, in, I think in any entrepreneurial venture, it's never smooth sailing. Uh, you know, nothing ever goes smooth all the time. Uh, this is my third venture, and and I think uh, you know just like all other kind of ventures, there's always so much change that is actually going on with respect to venture that you have to try and kind of keep adjusting yourself. Um, I think interesting for us, there was obviously a, a, a fairly clear concept of what we wanted to do in terms of product kind of functionality, the pain point that it could kind of solve. Having said that, we took the time to really kind of validate the idea. We spoke to a lot of parents. We spoke to a lot of health systems peers just to kind of understand what the pain points really were, what the use cases could be, what the user interface, user experiences thereof would be. So we really kind of took our time to decide which direction we wanted to head in. And honestly, when we started out, we were not sure whether we would be a B2C or a B2B platform. We only decided on that almost about uh, 18 months in. Uh, and then we decided that we really wanted to kind of go down the B2B path really working very closely with health systems. And then we've obviously kind of kept that path since then. But I think in the early phases, we've tried to still kind of trying to discover what we wanted to do and really kind of took the time to do that with appropriate kind of validation data kind of coming through the system as we were doing a lot of kind of conversations out there. Yeah. Great. And Dom, um, you know, you've 
you had this other personal experience that led you down this path. Is this, is your product now exactly what you envisioned? Not at all, no. Um, so when, when uh, and I think, you know, you could ask that question of any startup and you'll probably get the same answer. Um, when we started out, uh, what, the one component that we were really sure was going to be central to uh, to the Explorer platform was um, uh, was wayfinding. Uh, so we thought that um, part of part of the experience of going into the hospital for the child would be finding your your way around. Um, but we've involved children at every stage of the development process, and when we when we showed them our ideas for wayfinding, they, they really weren't they really weren't interested in how you get from A to B. The parents tend to take responsibility for that. So what they're interested in is what a room looks like when you get there. But the corridors that connect the different rooms are unimportant to the children. So we we you know at this point we've invested loads of time looking into. Uh, triangulation with beacon technology so that we could pinpoint accurately where they were in the hospital and it was meaningless to them so um, so, um, so we, we dumped that idea um, so I think that was a, a pivot early on um, the other uh, and it's interesting I, I mean Patty mentioned this as well but the, the pandemic um, definitely uh, caused a pivot for us in the sense that um, last March, when um, you can tell from my accent, I'm in the UK. Last March, when um, when when uh, when everything uh, suddenly became apparent that the world was changing overnight, um, we were just about to complete a funding round that fell apart, um, and we were just about to go to market and, and approaching hospitals trying to sell a digital therapeutics platform for children. At that time, was really really, really difficult, so we had to. Do, uh, we had to change our strategy and focus on um, on product development rather than on um, fundraising and, uh, and and sales. Ah. Well, that leads me into my next question for you all. Um, can you talk about your biggest challenges? You know, maybe that's one of them. Um, your biggest challenges, and then on the flip side, I'll ask you about what's most rewarding. Dom, do you want to build off? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, sorry, yeah. So um, I, I think the biggest challenge is um, for anyone working in the paediatric space, uh, fundraising in the paediatric space is really difficult. Um, the, the investment, paediatrics is, is desperately underfunded, considering, you know, there's, a, there's a, a, a saying which I'm sure some of you have come across, which is children are. 20% of the population, but 100% of our futures, and yet we don't um, we don't invest in them in the same way that, that we invest in um, adult technologies. So I think fundraising is is a really really big challenge. Um, in terms of the 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 the, the, the rewards, though, um, the, the thing that, the thing that gives me the most reward is we have this expert advisory board. Um, and they're amazing. Our expert advisory board is a group of children. The youngest is eight, and the oldest is um, is fifteen. And we meet really regularly. And when they get together, they are just they're, they're brutal. They give us really um, really honest feedback. They tell us when things aren't working. Um, they tell us when ideas ideas just don't don't come together. Um, but but the energy in the room and the ideas that they give is just fantastically rewarding. Oh, cool. Um, Patty and DJ, what about, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've experienced? Well, I think, uh, I mean, I certainly agree with Dom that, you know, fundraising is always, always a challenge. I think there's, you know, I, I guess unless you're from Uber or something where it seems to be easy for them, it's always, it's always takes a lot of time. I think the thing that I, I would also focus on is for anyone that's doing medical technology, whether it's a diagnostic or a device or therapeutic is that, you know, you really, it takes a fair amount of money to get, be able to get to a prototype to then you always learn something when it gets out in the field, you know, so trying to figure out how you can quickly get to a prototype, learn, you know, when you get it out on customers, you're always going to then, or, you know, really on patients. And then you'll also learn a lot more when you get on a broader, you know, the bigger the set of patients, the more you're going to learn about how the technology works. So I think, you know, one of the challenges is always to be ready for what you learn 
I mean, I, I can tell you several times we've done products, you know, in, in my last 20 years where, you know, it ended up changing the indication because of something you learned in your clinical trials. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, having to do that is something that's, you know, can be challenging. You, you can't get too fixated sometimes, either that you have the perfect solution or that you know exactly what the best use is going, it's going to be until you get out there. And, uh, you know, we definitely found a number of technical hurdles, things that we had to do new inventions for because of you know, how the technology performed in the field. But, uh, you know, in the end, you know, we went from two patents to 37 patents. So, you know, that's that's the painful process you go through in, in, the, in development. And, and on the other hand, I guess on what's rewarding is, you know, when you, when you get it right, like when we had that moment where we, you know, took the product for down to Ghana for some of the final trials and people, users were just amazed. You know, they brought their friends, you know, they called people from other institutions. I mean, you know, there's just nothing more rewarding than that. You feel like you've solved a need that you've worked years for. You know, it's something you want to try to bottle it and take it back to your team, you know, because you want everybody to share in that kind of that victory, that feeling of glory that you get when you really nailed it. And I think that's super exciting. I, I hope everybody here gets that feeling, <laughs> I guess you experience that because it doesn't happen all the time. I think just to echo what, what Patty said, you know, healthcare is, is a very complex business, right? So, and I think healthcare fundamentally is a very challenging sector to be in. The care management is a very co complex, complicated endeavor. So I think as a consequence of that, you know, health systems, children's hospitals, provider platforms tend to be complicated for a reason. So I think just navigating the process quagmire, navigating the regulatory quagmire around it, I think, you know, all of those elements, I think, create a fundamental, I think, challenge around any kind of healthcare business. So as a consequence of that, that's why, you know, sales cycles in, in healthcare, especially on the B2B side, are long for a reason, right? So... And I think that's always been, I think, a big challenge in kind of healthcare. We've obviously kind of faced that. So I think just kind of navigating that, staying the course, knowing that it's going to take you anywhere between, you know, six months all the way up to 12 to 18 months sometimes to be able to actually get into a health system, be able to kind of work with them and demonstrate the validity of your kind of platform. I think always uh, is a very, I think, challenging part of, you know, what we do. I feel that the most rewarding element of this is actually seeing patients come back and say, hey, we would love to be able to use this platform. Now, we don't actually do any direct consumer sales. We primarily kind of partner with health systems to kind of do that. But on a daily basis, we get anywhere between 10 to kind of 15 emails from parents who are kind of managing chronic care conditions for the kids, writing to us saying, hey, you know, is there a way that we can kind of get access to the platform? I think that feels really good. Because in a way, it almost kind of makes, it tells you that you're not smoking dope about the stuff that you're kind of building. So I think that's always in my mind, I think the most rewarding part of, you know, what we've kind of building here. That's really neat. That patient, I yeah, have patient, meeting that patient need. Um, now, getting back to your products, what's around the corner for you all? What are you most excited about um, in, the, in the short term? Dom, do you want to lead us off again? Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things that we're really excited about is bringing Explorer to the States. So um, we're going to be starting wow. a trial very soon at OHSU um, and also at um, Helen DeVos in um, Michigan and uh, um, Austin Children's Hospital as well. So really, really excited about that. Um, and uh, I think there's going to be some great learnings for, from that. Uh, we're also, the other thing that I'm also really excited about is that um, we've decided to support a charity called um, World Child Cancer. Um, and they support children in the third world who are going through cancer treatment. So we're going to give them uh, licenses for Explorer. And we're going to begin a, a small scale trial actually in Ghana, um, in, in, in Ghana very soon. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how that goes down. That's awesome. Congratulations. Um, all right, CJ, what's coming up for you all? Yeah, so uh, you know, we've just actually cracked the pilot with Children's Mercy Cancers on pediatric diabetes. I think we're very excited about that because that's actually a new care pathway for us. You know, a lot of our prior focus was on 
uh, pediatric asthma, pediatric autism, uh, and then uh, a bit in the congenital heart disease side of things. I think there's a new care pathway. As part of this, we're actually also adding in some additional functionality around medication adherence kind of protocols. We're actually building an AI chatbot which can staff, be staffed by nurse practitioners and can do a lot more quicker online triaging within our app itself. So I think there's some interesting stuff happening both on the business side, care pathway introduction side, as well as on the uh, on the product functionality side of things. So really excited to see where we'll be in the next seven, six months. Um, awesome. And then Patty, what's coming up for Phoenix? Well, so, so like a lot of you, you know, we, we tried to, we had to launch our product in the middle of the pandemic, which, you know, is a little difficult when you're training people over Zoom, how to use a product and shipping it to them, but it, it did work. Uh, we got a lot of sites up and going and we're right now, I think just in the past month as people are now seeing the product out there, we're getting some great strategic relationships that, you know, are really going to help us with scaling both on the side of people that want to bring technology that could go on our platform, which would make it a lot faster for us to get tests out there and, uh, you know, including in the COVID area. And then the second way is people that want to help us get out to the end users on the ground, because as a startup, you just can't, you can, you can get the, the seed, you can, you can put out the first few seeds, but you can't take the whole field over right away. And, uh, you know, I'm just really excited working with some great organizations that, you know, really could, could help make a difference. And uh, that's, it's been surprising that these people have kind of come out and, and really are starting to move ahead. So I'm hoping that, you know, crossing our fingers that things will start to slow down with COVID and we can then get out there in the field, be able to get back to India and do some of the things that we need to do. So, but, you know, it'll really, really be really great to be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I have one last question for you all. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it while I, I formulate a couple thoughts of my own, but I'm going to be asking you, what is your advice that you would give to the teams that are pitching today who are looking forward to their future as entrepreneurs in this stage? Um, so I'll let you think about that for a moment. Just while I touch on some of the things that I heard you all discuss, and that was really around um, that patient experience, that personal experience, that that core problem that you are all really trying to address from the beginning and really spending the time to validate that problem and vet that problem and make sure that you're getting it right from the patient perspective. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, you've all done a lot of good, amazing work there. Um, and then taking the time, understanding that it takes time to navigate the healthcare system. It, it is such a beast um, that staying the course and, and uh, believing in your product and finding those partners. Uh, congratulations on all that you've done so far in just a few years. I believe all of you have um, just a few years, three or four years old. So amazing. Okay. So we're getting ready for pitches. Um, after we're done here, we're moving forward to the pitches. What advice would you each tell the founders of these companies? Um, Patty, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, you know, I guess my, my perspective, what I've learned a lot is that, you know, your success as an entrepreneur is not just the wins. It's really how you deal with the challenges and kind of facing those challenges with optimism. You can, then you'll get to the other side, get your team going uh, by being unstoppable and uh, getting help when you need the help because the, the making a successful company is so much of that is the effort of getting through these challenges because we, you all face them and, you know, don't, don't give up. That's what I would Love say. Work, work through them. Thank you. CJ. Yeah, I, actually, I think I have two pieces of advice, if I may. Uh, one is, I think, just reiterating the point on, around validation. I think just take the time to validate, validate, validate as much as you can in the market, product, uh, execution plan, all of that. Which I, I, I believe as entrepreneurs, it's very easy to drink our own kind of Kool-Aid. So just kind of take the time to really understand what you're trying to build, why, and whether there's actually a commercial business to be built or not. 
I think, and, and then two, uh, I think again, echoing, as I, I think Patty's point, you know, hate is gonna hate, right? So there's gonna be a lot of people gonna tell you that, hey, you know, uh, you know, you're kind of building something which might not, might be uncool or whatever it is, but hey, you are the one who's actually building something which is, I think, phenomenal. I think entrepreneurs are a great breed of people who are actually doing something phenomenally innovative. So just believe in that and just kind of keep pushing. Love it. Yeah. And Dom. Um... So um, I, I don't know if you guys in the States talk about glass half full and glass half empty, but I think uh, you've definitely got to be glass half full. Um, you, I mean, the, 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 the life of an entrepreneur is full of setbacks. Uh, all of the time, and every time you get some criticism, see it, see it as a learning point. Listen to the criticism, learn from it, move on, and uh, and focus on the future and not on the past. That's really great. Gosh, we're out of time. Um, thank you all so much for joining and sharing you. your experiences and words of wisdom. Um, for all of those online, if you haven't checked out their products yet, I encourage you to see their product videos. It's, they're on the Inventathon website. Um, they're truly inspiring. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, and at this time, and thank you all for the yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'm going to welcome, yeah, Sarah's back up and she's going to kick off the pitches. Enjoy everybody and good luck to the presenters.